contention amongst the Samaritans and the Jews as to where authentic sacrifice should be offered, the Samaritans believing it was to be on Mount Gerizim, but our Lord knew that if he was to show all the people, not only in the time that he dwelt amongst us, but until the end of time, that he was truly the Messiah, the authentic sacrifice would be offered on Mount Moriah, and so he had, in the old translation, set his face towards Jerusalem. That is, with all the faculties of his, of his sacred humanity and of his divinity, he desired to enter into Jerusalem, there be taken by the Romans and ultimately betrayed by the people and offer his sacred humanity on Mount Calvary for our sake. And so, in this insistence on going towards Jerusalem and not changing his plans, he wishes to show the Samaritans and the chosen people alike that he came for one reason and for one reason only, to offer his sacred humanity on Mount Calvary for the salvation of the world. And so the apostles, think, knowing that the Old Testament would call upon fire from heaven as it would in the prophet Elijah and others when any messenger of God was rejected, sought to destroy the Samaritan people for their, for their lack of faith and understanding as to why the Messiah had to journey towards Jerusalem. And so the Lord in rebuking them shows that what was symbolic in the old, what pointed to the Messiah and was to lead the chosen people and was intended to lead the chosen people to recognize him when he came to dwell amongst us, that dispensation would be replaced by a new one, and its characteristic note would be that of mercy. For the Lord set his face towards Jerusalem, that is, resolved to undergo his passion, his death, and ultimately his resurrection for our sake, in order that he could establish the, 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 the dispensation of mercy by which mankind can truly receive forgiveness of their sins. And so, we see in today's gospel again the deep and profound love that the Lord had for mankind. He who is the creator of all things, who is omnipotent and who is most just, has chosen ultimately to serve mankind by offering to us in each and every moment of our life his divine mercy and the forgiveness of our sins. And then, upon receiving this, we too can set ourselves towards our Jerusalem, that is, the manner that Christ wishes us to be crucified in this life for his sake, overcoming all our faults and failings, all our evil incl inclinations, or when we fall either venially or mortally, seeking his grace again in the sacrament of confession and thereby resolving again to put our hands back on the plow and to always march forward, always marching forward, towards Mount Calvary because it is ultimately there that mankind demonstrates the love they have for the Savior who first manifested his love for you, who, who manifests his love in the most profound way on Mount Calvary for our sake. And so let us resolve in the company of all the angels and saints, but most especially in the company of our Blessed Lady and the Apostles, let us resolve to march forward knowing that our, faithfulness, uh, that our faithfulness to Christ ultimately not only redoubts towards our greater good, but also the greater good of all humanity. For in a day and an age when Christ too is rejected as the Samaritans rejected him today, it is only the witness of the mystical body of Christ that can again begin to establish that love of God in the world. And so let us strive to bear all things well, all things with that perfect charity that the Lord would show mankind in the sacrifice he would give so that again in our day and age the love of God may be enkindled. That love must first be recognized and so it is entrusted to the mystical body to truly show the world how much it loves the Lord of all goodness who has done so much for us. And so let us strive always and everywhere 
especially in our day and age of unbelief. Let us strive always and everywhere to be great witnesses as James and John would become great witnesses of the love and mercy of God, ultimately giving their lives totally totally to that commission that the Lord had given them, that is, the mission of the apostles to go forward and to preach to all nations the good news, that message that is primarily entrusted to the apostles and their successes, but also to each and every member of the mystical body by cooperating in the apostolic mission of the church, and ultimately, that mission is to strive to get all mankind to recognize that true mercy can only be found in that one institute that God has made the vessel in the instrument of his mercy to all mankind, that is, Holy Mother Church. And so let us strive by our lives of faithfulness to Jesus Christ to show the Catholic Church to be that beacon, that bright light that is placed on the mountaintop in order that all men may come to the portals of her door, enter into her, and there find the love that the human heart seeks, that love that ultimately is, that, that love that is completed when we receive the beatific vision in heaven, but that love that truly begins in this life when we, like the apostles, come to recognize the Lord in the breaking of the bread, that is, in the Eucharistic sacrifice by which he fulfills his promise to us to be with us always, even until the end of time. And so, if the world is arrayed against us, we have nothing to fear, for the Lord is faithful to his promise. Let us be faithful to our promise, because he truly is with us, with us this day, with us tomorrow, and with us till the end of time, with his true presence in the Eucharistic mystery. And so we truly have nothing to fear in this life, but rather we must turn to the Lord in order to, in order to overcome all the trials and the tribulations in this life, and ultimately the fear by which we are unwilling to give up our lives in this world in order to take it up anew in the life to come. And so let us strive always remember to keep in mind that which the apostles would come to know so well and to understand and ultimately the great zeal showed by St. James and St. John this day would not as it were be destroyed by the Lord but it would be changed by the Lord for their zeal would become the same zeal that the Lord had for souls, a willingness of the apostles to give up their lives for the sake of Christ who first gave it up for our sake. And so let us strive to imitate their good example knowing that the Lord is faithful to his promise and he truly will reward us with that which alone can bring us our happiness, the beatific vision, if we remain faithful to him in this life in order to enjoy him for all eternity in the life to come.